For a man pushing 60, David still had it. Good-looking, strong, brave. His sudden rise to popularity had occurred some 40 years ago. He was all but 19 when he defeated the Philistine champion, Goliath. David was the one who had been handpicked by God himself to serve as the king of Israel. Now, the sweet psalmist of Israel had been reigning for nearly 30 years. It was about a year ago, however, that he had done something just, um, just terrible. Oh, it turned out all right, but you see, he had to sign the death warrant of, of one of his best soldiers. He had to, so that he could marry the man's wife, you must understand. All that was behind him. He had spent enough time worrying about who knew or who suspected what. Now, Bathsheba had just delivered their baby. A cute little guy. David was so happy sitting on his throne one day, no doubt tending to very important issues of the state, when in walked in his old friend, the prophet Nathan. How are you, Nathan? Been a while since I've seen you. I'm doing all right, king. I've got a situation, though, and I need you to make a ruling on a little problem. Does Nathan suspect? No, it's been so long ago. He, he can't possibly know anything about it. Well, Nathan, let's hear it. And so, in about 60 words, Nathan proceeds to tell David a carefully crafted story about a rich man who stole a poor man's only lamb. There were two men in a certain town. One was rich and one was poor. The rich man owned a great many sheep and cattle. The poor man owned nothing but one little lamb he had bought. He raised that little lamb and it grew up with his children. It ate from the man's own plate and drank from his cup. He cuddled it in his arms like a baby daughter. Well, one day, a guest arrived at the home of the rich man. But David, instead of killing an animal from his own flock or herd, he took the poor man's lamb and killed it and prepared it for his guest. You remember how David responded to this? Believing that it's a real incident, David's anger boils, exploding into a passionate pronouncement of judgment. As the Lord lives, the man who has done this deserves to die. And then his own world came crashing down. You are the man, Nathan told him. I wonder if in that instant, David, David felt a sense of relief. He might have thought to himself, Nathan knows, it, it's over. God knew all along, I, I know that, but, but now it's out in the open. The charade need not continue. Well, if David thought that, then he thought wrong. No, David, it's not over. It's only getting started. We have a saying. Sin will take you farther than you want to go, cost you more than you want to pay, and keep you longer than you want to stay. Do we really believe that? David didn't. At least not until it was very much too late. Never did David dream that the long-term consequences of his liaison with Bathsheba would be so devastating. The sword, Nathan told him, the sword shall never depart from your house. When David from his own lips had required the rich man to restore the lamb fourfold, little did he know that he was actually condemning himself and he would pay fourfold. The long-term consequences of sin are difficult to foresee. Let me give you some illustrations. A beer meant to soothe away life's sorrows. Well, it soon becomes itself an even bigger problem. Our worldly attitudes and appetites, they'll turn up in our children's rogue behavior years down the road. Harsh criticism of our brothers and sisters molds the hearts of our kids. Our sporadic attendance now, while our kids are at home, still growing up, they'll evolve and leave home, and they will totally neglect the Lord's church. I'm telling you, I have seen this play out so many times. David and Bathsheba's first son together died. But when their second son was born, Nathan the prophet went back to the palace 
and told them to name him Jedidiah, which means beloved of the Lord. This son lived one day to ascend David's throne, rule Israel during its golden age, build the beautiful temple, and pen inspired words of timeless wisdom. We know this baby boy better as Solomon, not Jedidiah, but they are one and the same. There are many lessons to be learned from 2 Samuel 12, but I want to emphasize two. Number one, the long-term consequences of sin far outweigh any momentary pleasure. But, number two, no matter the severity of the punishment, your sin can always be forgiven when you repent. David, with, when he was confronted with his sin, said, I have sinned against the Lord. God spared his life. And that can be true of any other man or woman after God's own heart. While we may have to live with the long-term consequences of our sin, we don't have to live with the guilt. Forgiveness is always available.